Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to quickly go over some of the best settings for an edge router. Um, I'm going to say specifically for gaming, but really this just applies to anyone who wants a stable connection. This has to do with quality of service and buffer bloat, which is one of the main reasons that a lot of people have bought an edge router in the past. So I'm going to be going over how to configure this uh, QoS Smart Q kind of what it does and what to think about um, if you want to enable or keep it disabled. So first let's just kind of go over the bare basic settings that you want. First of all we're going to be enabling hardware offloading. If you don't know what that is, it's where it offloads the uh, processing of data from the actual processor of the edge router into the actual hardware of the device. And this is going to enable the best performance of your edge router. However, there is one major caveat with the hardware offloading, and that is that you cannot use quality of service with hardware offload enabled. As soon as you enable quality of service or your smart queue, also known as the buffer bloat commands, then your hardware offloading is going to be null and void, and you're going to be limited to the processing power of the device. So this is one of those major... Uh, questions that you need to ask yourself and that's are you already having internet issues and also is your internet connection over 100 or 200 megabits per second there are a few variables here like which model of edge router you're running the edge router x is going to uh, be a lot slower with quality of service than an edge router 4 just because of the hardware that it has but generally my rule is if your internet speed is over 100 you might just want to stick with hardware offloading only. That's going to give you the best performance, and you really shouldn't be experiencing too much buffer bloat with a connection like that. But if you are experiencing issues, then we can go the quality of service route, enable that smart queue, and try to get a more consistent connection. And this is also going to probably not be too much of a problem on connections under 100 megabits per second. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. I am going to assume that you already have an Edge Router X uh, set up with the basic settings. Probably just went through the basic setup wizard and got it off the ground. Now I do go over the hardware offload command in my Edge Router X first time setup video, but let's just go over kind of how to do that. Uh, we're going to SSH into our Edge Router. I'm using PuTTY for that. I'm going to enter configure mode and we're just going to do a set system offload and then here is where your offloading commands are going to differ. This depends on what hardware is inside the device. If, is it MediaTek or is it Cavium? Me personally, this is an Edge Router 4, so we are on a Cavium-based device, so we have a lot more offloading commands we need to enable. So set system offload IPv4 and forwarding enable is going to be our main one that we want but we're also going to enable it for pretty much everything else. And that's, uh, we'll do GRI enable, VLAN enable, uh, PPPoE enable, and we'll just go ahead and do bonding enable because why not? And we can also do set system offload. I believe um, this one's not gonna work. Yep, this platform integrates the NAT offload into forwarding offload. So this is one of those differences. On the Edge Router 4, Hardware NAT offloading is done in the same command as IPv4 forwarding. But if you're running an Edge Router X, the set system offload HW NAT is going to enable hardware offload for pretty much all of these that we just uh, had to manually enable with all these different commands on our Edge Router 4. So just be aware that there is a difference between the different Edge Router devices and the hardware offloading commands. Now we're also going to enable it for IPsec and I'm not going to worry about IPv6 because I just don't care. So let's go ahead and commit these changes and save. So what I just did was enabled hardware offloading for pretty much everything that the device supports and that's going to give us the best raw throughput performance uh, for our data. Now what that doesn't do is manage it in any sort of way. So that's where QoS is going to come into play. So like I said, if you have a slower connection or you're having issues with your connection, you can enable QoS. It's going to bring your speeds down a little bit, depending on a few factors, but it should stabilize your connection. 
And if you're going to enable the smart queue, first you need to know what kind of speeds you are working with. So let's just go ahead and go to speedtest.net and see what our uh, connection is. Now I do have my provider and IP blurred out, but yours should tell you uh, your own. So we'll go ahead and click go and see what we're working with. Now I do have a pretty fast connection. So in this case, and personally, I do not run QoS because I don't need to. Hardware offloading works just fine. I have enough bandwidth and it's a stable connection that I don't need that uh, buffer bloat protection. But let's go ahead and uh, enable it anyways. And let's just kick the uh, 100 off. So say we have an 82.94 and an 87.80 uh, up-down connection. So let's go ahead and log into our edge router. We'll just go into the regular uh, GUI. And we're going to go ahead and go to the QoS tab. So here the first tab that we have is Smart Q. You have three different options. You got Basic and Advanced. We're not going to go into either of those. We're just going to stay with the Smart Q. And we're going to give it a name. So we'll call this one Buffer Warrior. Why not? WAN interface. Select the one that you use for your internet connection. Uh, for me, that's Ethernet 0. And then we're going to specify our upload and our download rate. And this is what is going to be policed, basically. It's going to try and keep the traffic as fair as possible to the speed that you set here. So in our speed test here, we got 482 and 487. I know that I am paying for a 500 up, 500 down connection. That is what I would put in here if I wanted to police to that rate. However, I just said we're going to assume that we have an 82 and an 87, so we'll, we'll say that we're paying for 80 up, 80 down. So we're going to put that in here. And we can do advanced options. you got burst, target, interval, etc., etc. I'm not going to worry about any of that. It's not necessary. So we'll keep that disabled and we'll just hit apply. And this is really all we need to do to enable the smart queue. But big caveat, since we applied that configuration, I thought it was going to give us an error, but it didn't. Um, by enabling QoS and the smart queue, we just basically blew out all of those hardware offload commands that we did in the command line. So you cannot have both. You can't run both QoS and have hardware offloading. You can't have your cake and eat it too. But let's go ahead and see what this did to our speeds. So we'll go ahead, rerun the speed test, and you can see we're a little bit more jumpy and we're also a lot slower. But what we should see are fairly flat lines, which we are seeing. It looks like it's keeping it between 60 and 65 meg. Um, our upload and download, it's not shifting all over the place like normal. And we're pretty much equal on our download and our upload. Now, you're probably wondering, why are we only getting 65 when we set 80? And that's because there's this kind of buffer area. When you enable the smart queue, it blocks off some bandwidth, basically for emergency use. Um, it actually keeps your speeds lower than what you configured, just so there's a little bit of headroom uh, to use there. So if something doesn't go according to plan, or it can't keep something at a certain rate, it has some leftover bandwidth to play with so that it doesn't actually like saturate your connection if something does end up using more bandwidth than it should. So keep that in mind when configuring this. You do want to put in what you're actually paying for. So in my case I would do 500 and 500 for my actual connection, but it's going to kick it lower than that by a certain percentage just to have extra headroom. And I just configured that to 500, 500. Let's go ahead, do another speed test and see what we get. Now an Edge Router X is not going to be able to police a 500 meg connection. And I'm not even entirely sure that an Edge Router 4 can either. So I'm not completely sure if this is just uh, the max or not. But you can see our speeds are substantially lower than we put in but it should be a lot more stable. And to do this, let's go ahead and run another test. And for this, we're gonna go to pretty much just the first Google result I got for a buffer bloat test. Uh, what this is gonna do is it's gonna test the latency while there's an upload and download in uh, progress, which is the main thing you're gonna fight against with buffer bloat. And really what that is is say you're playing a game and you have 
something that's halfway bandwidth intensive happening in the background, usually your connection is going to saturate and your latency is going to spike and go all over the place. But what this quality of service is supposed to do is police that traffic down to where you're not using your full amount and if you do have something that comes up in the background that needs to use a lot of bandwidth, it's going to get cut. And if you're playing a game, you should not see any variation in your ping, at least that's the theory. So to do this, I'm going to delete the smart queue that we just made and re-enable all of the hardware offloading commands so we can get a baseline here. All right, and we've got our hardware offloading back, so let's go ahead and run the buffer bloat test. Okay, and I did restart that test because it got stuck on warming up for the download, but here we've got our unloaded uh, latency of 15 milliseconds, so what that is is that's our ping when there's no download or upload going on, and now it is basically doing a speed test at 463 meg, and you can see that our ping went up by 118 milliseconds with the download active and now it's doing the exact same thing with an upload and this gives us a buffer bloat grade of C your latency increased considerably under load so we went from 15 and with a download active we went to 118 and with an upload active we only went to 4 above our unloaded latency so this is really a better test for uh, buffer bloat and latency on the connection and you can see all of these more granular stats down here but let's go ahead and enable our smart queue again and we're going to set that to ethernet zero i am going to just use the full speed of my internet here for the first test so 500 500 go ahead and apply that and we will rerun the buffer bloat test so let's go test again and what I expect to see here is actually a higher unloaded uh, latency, but don't know for sure if that's actually going to happen. And it looks like we might get stuck with uh, warming up again. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page. Alright, so it turned out that my edge router really did not like me enabling the uh, smart queue that time. And I'll have to go back in this video and make sure, but I'm pretty sure I put in 500 bits per second as the max upload and download speed, which is pretty much too slow for anything at all to work. So I have fixed that. We are back. Uh, let's just go ahead and log back into the edge router here. And take a look at the QoS tab, and we do have our buffer for 500-500. So let's go ahead and rerun this test now that it's actually uh, fast enough to do something. And the last time, I believe, our unloaded latency was 15, so we're spot on at least what we were before. And here we're under the download uh, load, and you can see that we are downloading a lot slower than we were. But take a look at our... Um, download active latency. We're only changing by about 4 milliseconds. And I have a feeling it's probably going to be a little bit better for the upload. Ah, actually, it looks like it's about the same. So this time we have an A plus uh, buffer bloat rating. So that is how you use SmartQ to get a more stable connection, and this would definitely help with gaming. So I didn't take a screenshot of the previous results, but we saw we got a C and that our download active uh, latency went up by a ton but now after enabling our smart queue we did sacrifice quite a bit of overall speed but when we were downloading and uploading um, our latency barely changed plus or minus four milliseconds is absolutely nothing so this definitely helped us out in the uh, latency department and that's pretty much all there is to enabling SmartQ. You, you just go in here, you give it a name, specify which interface is your internet one, and put in the speed that you expect to have from your internet. And just keep in mind that it is going to cut that down from what you configure. So even though I put 500 in, we saw I only got 327, but we had a lot uh, more of a stable uh, latency even while uploading and downloading at the same time. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to run one more test uh, with the buffer bloat uh, smart queue in disabled. 
and this time we're getting a lot better uh, latency overall unloaded probably due to the fact that I had to <laughs> reboot my edge router after messing up the first configuration but you can see that our active download um, latency is again going kind of all over the place we're already at positive uh, around 50 milliseconds so there's an obvious benefit here well this time we got a little bit better uh, score but we still have um, this little warning sign next to low latency gaming and that's because our latency went up by 46 with the download active now our upload barely changed at all but really uh, I mean I've I've got enough upload that shouldn't make any difference I don't think I'm gonna be able to saturate the upload really when I've got 500 up most of the time on your connections you're probably very much skewed like a hundred down but only 10 up or something like that so that could be an issue for a lot of other people but let's just take a look at these side by side so on the left is with our smart queue enabled sure our speed is quite a bit lower our unloaded latency is a little bit higher but our change during download and upload was a lot less compare that over here plus 46 so I think we've pretty much beaten that horse to death now so just to kind of recap again if you have a very fast connection this probably isn't that necessary but like I just showed even on my very fast connection there is still a difference to be had with uh, smoothing over the latency but I would still maintain to not really enable this unless for one your connection is lower than 100 megabits per second or if you're noticing issues now this isn't going to solve all issues um, if you have a substantial amount of buffer bloat this isn't going to absolutely kill all of it in some situations uh, if you have an ISP issue or a cabling issue or problems with your equipment then this is probably going to help but it won't eliminate um, any deeper issues that you might have but anyways hopefully this video kind of went over the uh, two most common ways to boost your gaming performance when using an edge router uh, hopefully you learned a little bit of something as always if there's questions leave them in the comments down below and as always happy networking